This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. I just finished traveling Southeast Asia for 41 days, and I usually always get sick when I travel, and quite frankly, eating is difficult for me. It's hard to find a restaurant, and I'm spoiled in Austin with my personal chef. Well, I took these little packets with me this time, 30 of them, in my carry-on suitcase. They kept me totally healthy with 11 different secret ingredients. You can see them at NathanLacka.com forward slash juice. I'll tell you more later on in the show. That's NathanLacka.com forward slash juice. And this is episode 649, and coming up tomorrow morning, you guys are going to learn from a company called T-Rex, which is a financial technology company that's raised $15 million and breaks down securitized loans from renewable energy organizations so investors can buy in. Very interesting company. Good morning, everybody. Our guest this morning is Pablo Estevez. He's an, a Mexican entrepreneur who co-founded Gus, an artificial intelligence company that focuses on automating customer service and sales via chat for Spanish-speaking countries. Since founding, Gus has been distinguished for receiving re uh, awards like the Diamond Dinner by Mass Challenge, Endeavor National Panel, and Bit Expansion Prize. Pablo, are you ready to take us to the top? Yeah. Good. How are you doing, Nathan? I'm doing really well. Doing really well. So tell us about Gus. Uh, what's it do and what's your revenue model? How do you make money? Uh, yeah. Well, before I tell you exactly about what we're doing now, I think it's interesting to mention how we started. Oh, no, no, no. No, sorry. It's, tell us, Pablo, because people want to follow along and, and then tell your story right, after great. you tell us what you do. All right. Perfect. So so could you repeat the question again? Yeah. So, so tell us what Gus does and what's your revenue model? How do you make money? Perfect. So we develop AI to automate customer service and sales uh, via any chat channel. Um, and the way we make money is we, try, we charge businesses for every assisted conversation. So let's just say that tomorrow you want to buy a pizza and uh, you text uh, Domino's via Facebook, WhatsApp, or Twitter. Our bot comes in and is going to ask you, like, hey, what, what flavor do you want your pizza, whatnot? And then once we have all the necessary information for Domino's Pizza, for example, it's not a client, just giving an example, uh, to execute the order, we're going to charge the business uh, a very small fee. For, for that what? service, uh, to, so it's it's basically it, it's it's a standard fee. It goes anywhere between one to two Mexican pesos uh, per assisted conversation. Okay, and so it's a pay as you go model. It's not a, it's not a kind of flat subscription service. Exactly, it's a pay as you go. So basically, businesses don't have to spend any money up front for us to develop. Uh, and then and then yeah, basically we're looking for bigger. Uh, the, the more the more uh, volume, the more they pay us. Basically. Okay, so it's one point five. You said Mexican pesos per message. It's one to two Mexican pesos per conversation. So, so just going back to an example, like if if you just say hey and the bot answers, we're not going to charge for that. We're just going to charge when the bot is actually saving the time of a human operator. Okay, got it, got it. Um, okay, that makes sense. Now tell us your story. So, what year did you launch the business in? So basically, we launched uh, originally. It was a uh, well, we still run it, but it's a B two C concierge, like a personal assistant, very similar to the model. I don't know if you've ever heard of Go Butler where uh, you could text this, this personal assistant asking for whatever you want and uh, we'll get it done for you. And basically we, we realized very early on that if we really want to scale the business, we had to focus on AI as our only like asset basically. What and, year um, was launched though? What year did this happen? So we started working on it of May. So we're almost going to be two years old, May of uh, last year. And then we went uh, public, like we, we, we went live in August of 20. 15, I, yeah, 15, 16. So, yeah, you so, we went like, so you, what year did you start the, what year did you literally form the paperwork to create the company? 2014? 2015. 2015. Got it. And uh, co-founders or no? Yeah. So uh, we're a team of four. Uh, basically we're three co-founders and then we brought him along, uh, basically a late founder. We consider him a founder uh, and we brought him along like eight months ago or nine. And what, uh, am I self-funded or have you raised capital? We raised capital. Uh, we've closed, uh, we're about to close our third round. I'm not going to uh, say them out yet because we haven't we haven't signed the paperwork. Pablo, this will uh, go this will go live late April. Will you have the paperwork signed by then or no? Uh, yeah, I expect to have the paperwork. So we'll, signed. I'll keep it off the record until then. What was the amount? So we we closed uh, just now. We closed uh, 650. Uh, I mean, right now we have confirmed 500. We're we're, we're looking to close 650. Okay. And then we close around Next, the 700 pay, pesos or, or U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. I okay, got it. And then before that, we closed another round of 750. 
and then we had a, a an eighty thousand dollars seed round, uh, so you, like so back you, in August. So call it total funding, including this most recent round, was about one point four million. Exactly. Got it. So one point four million United States uh, dollars raised. Team of three co-founders plus kind of one late founder launched in twenty fifteen. Um, the uh, give us a sense. I mean, what are the key metrics you're tracking inside the business to determine how successful you guys are? So basically, our key focus right now is uh, we look at two things. One is obviously how many customers we're closing. Uh, and the second thing is how much uh, automation we're, we're able to create, basically. Um, and so by automation, I mean, like, how exact are our bots? Basically, once they go, once they're implemented, how much do they actually understand? And we, we try to keep the bots, like, between 80 to 90%. It's, it's a big difference because it depends a lot on the use case. Of, of understanding of the orders. So if they can automate like 80 to 90% of the conversation, we consider that we're doing a phenomenal job. And uh, and our focus for this year is to close basically the biggest amount of clients we can. Uh, we have a lot of very interesting commercial deals uh, like in the pipeline, so yeah. Pablo, how many companies have paid you for at least one conversation that you've automated for them? So we had three contracts sold, uh, signed for and uh, basically, right now, we just started our commercial efforts. We, we took a long time to develop the product where it is now. Uh, we started selling it roughly four to five months ago, and we closed our first three contracts already. Uh, we hope to close 85 total clients by the end of the year. That's obviously like the best case scenario. Like that's what we sure. would be like an amazing situation. Across those three customers, uh, to, let's just do last month, January 2017. How many conversations did your bots handle across those three customers? So uh, actually, the first client goes into production uh, by the end of next month. It's called Farmacia El Ahorro. And the next two are going to go into production by the end of February, end of February, beginning of March. Okay, so you haven't, you're, you're pre-revenue then. You haven't had anyone pay you yet one to two Mexican pesos for an automated conversation. Exactly. Okay, got it. What, what uh, I imagine when you went out and closed these three customers, you've projected how many conversations you think they'll have. How do you project it and what is that number? So when we, when we went out to close these three customers, we actually closed them on a different revenue model where they would pay us uh, a development fee up front. Uh, just to give you an idea, it, the development fee was between twenty and $50,000. Okay. And then uh, they, they, pay a, they, they pay a very small monthly rent, uh, which is with one to $3,000 a month. Okay. Uh, since then, we've shifted models. Uh, we're obviously looking to close out higher volume businesses and, and be able to grow with them in the sense of like, we only want to charge you if we're actually saving you money. And... Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, so those three customers, they paid you. They each paid you an upfront development fee of about twenty thousand dollars. So call it sixty thousand in total revenue. Yeah, roughly. And then they each pay about one to three thousand dollars per month. Once implemented, yeah. Got it. Okay, good. So those will be spinning up in the next one or two weeks. Now, why are you switching for, away from that model when they when they haven't even gone live yet? So basically, we we we, we have been trying for a long time to make this. Uh, it, it was, it basically, it depends on technology. So initially, we were looking at just to develop a bot. It was going to be like a, a very high production cost for us. And uh, we were able to, so I'm going to go a bit technical here, but basically sure. what we were trying to do at first is develop this AI specifically for that business. So let's just say you come in and we're going to develop this, uh, this ocean of, of knowledge uh, of how your customers only speak to your brand. Uh, obviously, the end goal here was always to be able to develop like this, this more universal AI and then be able to like uh, licenses off, license it off as a software as a service. But when we first closed these customers, that was still far off in terms of technology. Now what we're doing is we're creating this, this massive like ocean of knowledge, just to say it in one way. And then uh, when, when we close a new customer, he taps into that, to, to that information. So before, instead of having like this own AI that only works for business A, we have like this, this AI that works with all the businesses we sign and then all the businesses have, uh, will just tap into it. And, and this is beneficial both to the consumer and to us in the sense that the consumer, it becomes way cheaper to develop. And secondly, the way we see it is like, if we have a thousand clients, uh, our, our AI is going to get smarter and smarter really, really quick. And so when you come in, if you're the thousand and one client, you're already tapping into this database of knowledge. It's super specialized. Isn't that, isn't that data though? I mean, again, super specialized per customer. In other words, how can you, let's say, let's say you go sign up a fruit farm, like someone that sells local fruits tomorrow. It, like, and one of the questions they get via support is, um, uh, how many pounds of pineapple uh, is in this order? Like, there's no way that could already be in your database, right? I mean, how do you, how do you systematize that? So yeah, that, that's, that's correct. So we wouldn't know exactly the, the pineapple week because we don't have a pineapple client, but we understand how the users now are, are soliciting information. So for example, like when I say, Hey, I want to know this information, we understand that you're about to introduce 
your the one of the entities that, that you're going to require information on, right? So, so basically, the, the elements that we're talking about they change very quickly, but the way we speak, uh, especially like when, the reason we only focus on Spanish is because it's complex. Uh, it's pretty standard. So even if I could ask about pineapples in a thousand different ways, uh, there isn't that many more ways that I could be like, hey, how many pounds of pineapple in this? So, so the element that I'm speaking about changes, but the structure of the conversation remains pretty similar. I don't know. I don't know if, if I made myself. Clear yeah. So that. I mean, how much? I'm curious how much of this is still human driven. I mean, it, I, my guess is when you sign up a new customer, you basically tap into their current support system, immediately index or scrape all of the tickets or, or support questions that people have already submitted over as long a history as you can. And you're using that information to try and codify it somehow to, to automate stuff in the future. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's, that's accurate. Um, and how much can we automate? Look, the, the, what I say often is like uh, Walmart would be a terrible customer for us because they have a million, like a million products. But uh, if we start looking at businesses that are kind of niche, so for example, like let's just say insurance, or I gave the, the example order, earlier of ordering a pizza, like it's one product. So the, the amount of variations you can have over one certain project is more limited. So we're seeing that we can automate a lot. Like uh, I mentioned before that we try, to, we try to put the bot into production, automating between 80 and 90% of the conversations. Um, so, so, yeah. so go back to my original question. Once these two, three customers are signed up, what do you think total kind of conversation volume will be per month? Um, so total conversation per month, uh, like between 20 and 40,000 conversations. Obviously I'm being very, very bleak. I don't have sure. a number right now, but, uh, but yeah, I expect it between 20 and 40,000 conversations which I guess it's, it's, a, it's a wide margin. I just don't have the number. Yeah, no, I, I, I only ask because you say that's what your revenue is tied to are the amount of uh, conversations. Exactly. That's the why I was curious. So good. That helps us get a sense of how you could potentially uh, scale. Um, very cool. I do want to add something in here, Nathan, sure. just before you go. Uh, we, we, we try to charge a minimum of, of monthly consumption. So, so like independently, if you have 10,000 chats in a month, we, we ask the customer to at least give us uh, between 15,000 to 30,000 Mexican pesos. And just so you understand what that's in dollars between 750 and, um, and, 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 uh, $1,500 a month of minimum consumption. Got it. So they pay you a minimum, even if they have only three conversations that month, they still have to pay that minimum. Exactly. That's good. Cause that helps you make sure you only sign up customers that you think will beat the minimum. Exactly. Very cool. Pablo, let's wrap up here with the famous five. You ready? Uh, yeah, um, no, I don't know the famous time, but do it. You'll be good. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Ooh, uh, uh, The Hard Thing About Hard Things was pretty fun. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, not a lot. I'm a big fan of podcasts. I listen a lot to the Tim Ferriss show. I'm going to start listening to yours, and uh, I think I keep up with, instead of just one person, a lot. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Uh, not at the moment, no. Uh, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, I try to get eight, but, but I how many don't do you get? Compass, uh, like seven. I get I get between six and six and eight, but usually seven. Okay, and uh, what's your situation? Married, single? Do you have kids? Single. No kids, and how old are you? I'm 22 years old. All right, last Especially question. No kids. Nice, good. That's early. That's good. You're you're getting started early. You'll be really rich one day, right? Take, take... Uh, that's not the goal, <laughs> but yeah, maybe. Pablo, <laughs> take take us back two years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, that this was going to be really really hard. I was going to work a lot of hours. Guys, there you have it from Pablo. He wish he knew that it was going to be very, very hard and that he was going to work a lot of hours as it is in startup world. Again, monetizing on a pay-as-you-go model with his company, olagus.com, automating customer support currently across about three customers that pay about 20K as an upfront fee and one to $3,000 per month on United States dollars once they're all spun up. They'll be charging at scale one to two Mexican pesos per conversations uh, when, a, when a conversation is actually automated with their team of four based on a Mexico City 1.4 million dollars raised and uh, launched it back in 2015. Pablo, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed Pablo today, go back and listen to Peter yesterday with his company, Bailu, which lets Mexicans safely drink tap water for just $150, a big cost savings. It would mean the world to me if you guys got any value from this episode, if you would go leave a review on iTunes right now and then subscribe. You know, I hustle like heck to get these episodes out every freaking day for you guys. And trust me, I love it. I would do it with no listeners. But boy, oh boy, it makes my day and it makes my team's day when we see great reviews and get your feedback. So thanks so much. Okay, Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. 
how many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. So guys, I'm so glad to be back in Austin. I just got back from a major tour of Southeast Asia. I went to Sydney, Bangkok, Bali, and Japan. And you know, I always get sick when I travel. And this particular trip, my gosh, 15 different airports, 20 different hotels. I mean, imagine flushing in airport bathrooms. I was worried about germs and getting all the nutrition I need. I mean, finding a restaurant in Japan, difficult because nothing's in English. So it was hard enough to figure out the train system. But my point is, I had a guy named Drew Canoli on the show who said, Nathan, if you're concerned about that, take these little green packets with you. You just mix them once per day with water. They'll keep you super healthy. You get all your nutrients, and they'll keep you from getting sick. So I took them, and guys, they worked unbelievably well. I got no sickness. Just mixed them with water once per day. They didn't make my water bottles all sticky. That's, like, nice. A lot of these mixtures, they make them sticky. It was very clean and smooth. Took them once per day. Never got sick. So they've got 11 superfoods, and they're perfect if you're not traveling, but you're just on the go from your office to work. So you can check them out at NathanLatka.com forward slash juice. That's NathanLatka.com forward slash juice.